Hello everyone, I'm Fafonia, and I want to share a story about composition in cubical type theory. What I'm going to tell you is an open secret within the community for many years, but it's always presented as some technical detail swept under the rug. I want to give it a proper presentation. In cubical type theory, we can talk about lines, squares, cubes, and all hypercubes natively. Everything is a cube. For example, the natural numbers are cubes, and the addition operation gives you a number cube out of two number cubes. Even the type of natural numbers is a cube. Everything is a cube in cubical type theory. A fundamental part of cubical type theory is to make a cube out of fragments of it. On the left, we have three faces of a cube, and the theory guarantees that there is a whole cube matching the pieces. In other words, you can fill a cube from some constraints as long as they are reasonable. Formally, such filling operations are done by something called composition. Here's how you do composition. You start with a flow, and then add some wall, maybe another wall. Once you are done, the composition operation will give you a ceiling. You might wonder, hey, I thought we are going to get a whole cube, not just one face. It turns out that a ceiling problem is just a composition problem in the next dimension so that you can get the filter from this operation, always. With cubes and the composition operation, we can give the original presentation of homotopy type theory a computational meaning. The difficulty lies in the composition in the universes. Let's look into composition operation more closely. You can have all kinds of different configurations of walls for example, you can have two walls on the opposite sides, as shown on the left. Or, you can have yet another face in the back, as shown in the middle. Or, you can have one in the back and one on the left, but nothing on the right. You can have all kinds of different configurations. There's one configuration we hate most, which is a null composition. A composition with no walls. Why do we hate it? Long story short, there's something called Brunner's number, a program that should theoretically output the number 2. The number 2 refers to a very neat homotopy theoretical result that the fourth homotopy group of 3 sphere is isomorphic to the cyclic group z over nz for some number n. From classical theory or some very advanced math in homotopy type theory, we know the answer should be 2. However, if a computer can compute the number for us, then we can save all the trouble. You all heard that cubical type theory gave us a computational meaning to homotopy type theory, but we never managed to finish running the program. Some people thought a bigger machine would make it, but I think that is a little bit naive. Anyways, we look at the partial output of the program and discover this. Tons of null compositions. It seems they took tons of memory and slowed down the computation significantly. Therefore, we wondered whether we can get rid of them completely. To remove all null compositions, you actually have to remove all nullable compositions. The compositions that have a null composition as a subcube. The reason is that you can always get a subcube in type theory by substitution. So if you want to avoid null compositions, then you have to avoid nullable compositions as well. There are many equivalent ways to define nullable compositions. There are compositions which fail to cover all corners, as shown on the slide. 
from the category theoretical point of view, they are compositions whose shape of walls is not true under double negation, in terms of the first order logic embedded in the subobject classifier. Synthetically, you can also define them as compositions whose shapes might be true under some close substitutions for dimension variables. All of these descriptions are equivalent, and you can just pick whatever you like. I hope I have convinced you that it might make sense to kill notable compositions. The question is how? Plan A is to simply reduce no compositions to the floor. Because there is no wall to stop us from using the same elements, this should type check, right? Well, everything works until you start working on the universes. It seems difficult to maintain this extra equality in the presence of univalent universes. So, this one is out. Plan B is to forbid notable conversations from the start, in the hope that it will never occur. Unfortunately, this plan fails because of univalent universes again. If you ever need to explain why something doesn't work in type theory, just blame the universes. Plan C. Let's have only non notable conversations as part of the definition of a type and then define a different composition operation that can handle notable configurations nicely. It sidesteps the problem we had in plan A because this new composition operation does not have to satisfy all the equations that the original composition does. It solves the problem in plan B because we can use the alternative composition when we need notable compositions. So far, there are two main ways to do this. The first is based on binary decision trees, and the second is based on some algebraic technology. I will explain what it is later. In any case, there is no general construction. These methods only work in certain cases. Before I introduce these two methods, I have to explain how cubes are written in type theory. Let's start with one-dimensional cubes, also known as lines. Lines are terms indexed by one interval. And the index is labeled i here. You can imagine these intervals as the standard interval from 0 to 1. But they are abstract, so you cannot ask, for example, where a concrete number 0 0.3 is. You only know the index i is somewhere between 0 and 1. If the term is indexed by two intervals, then you have a square. These two indexes are labeled i and j here. Similarly, if the term is indexed by three intervals, then you have a cube. In general, if something is indexed by n intervals, then it is an n-dimensional cube, or n-cube for short. So, the composition we saw earlier was indexed by three intervals. Let's label the indexes i, j, and k. With these labels on dimensions, we can also label the walls. The one on the left, for example, is labeled as i equals to 0 because the wall is at the 0 end along the i dimension. The opposite wall is then labeled as i equals to 1 following the same logic. The back wall is labeled as j equals to 1 because it's at the 1 end along the j dimension. These wall labels are called cofibrations and are the key to our plan C. Let's assume the shape of a composition is written as a list of equations as cofibrations. The idea is to use a binary decision tree to actively check whether all the equations are already false. If so, 
Then we will reduce the composition to the floor. Let's begin with the first dimension expression, R0. We consider two cases, 0 and 1. Similarly, we can consider the two cases for the next dimension expression, R0 prime. Out of four combinations, two combinations, 0 equals to 0 and 1 equals to 1, imply that the equation is already true. And we should reduce it to the first wall immediately. The reason is that the composition needs to agree with the walls at relevant places. So when sum's equation is true, we should reduce the composition to the corresponding wall. The other two combinations, 0 equals to 1 and 1 equals to 0, imply that the equation is already false. And we can continue checking the equations until there is no equation left. Here's a new composition that we are going to define. We keep all the existing walls and add the ones introduced by the binary decision tree. We first check the left-hand side of the first equation and then the other side. If the equation holds, then we reduce the composition to the first wall. Otherwise, then we continue checking other equations. If there are no more equations to check, then it reduces to the floor. The limitation of this composition is that the whole construction process must respect all equalities. For example, it needs to commute with substitutions. This means we cannot randomly decide an order to check these expressions every time. We need to follow a particular order that is stable under substitutions. You can also consider many variants of the basic scheme. Maybe you want to remove duplicated walls, or maybe you want to identify different permutations of walls. The more equations you have, in general, the closer the composition is to the semantical ones in topology. Each new equation could potentially make the new composition more difficult because the equivalence classes of the inputs are larger, but it could also make the construction easier because the equivalence classes of the outputs are also larger. There are at least 24 combinations from all the choices on the screen. It seems we can solve most cases except when there is symmetry but no permutation. Another parameter is to allow conjunctions so that you can talk about the intersection of two co-vibrations directly. Similar technology applies, but it seems quite tricky when we want to remove inconsistent walls. The reason is that now we can have both r equals to 0 and r equals to 1 in one single co-vibration, which should be regarded as an inconsistent wall to remove an equation that is difficult to respect in general. Again, I want to emphasize that we do not have a general solution, but a different construct for each case if we have a solution. The second method applies to the CCHM style composition, which has a special property that the function from dimension expressions to co-vibrations is subjective. This means any co-vibration can be represented by one or more dimension expressions, and then we can use the complement of the dimension expression as the complement of a co-vibration which in general is impossible. To make it more concrete, this is a new composition we wish to define. The composition is indexed by the dimension expression R representing the shape of walls. This can be implemented by adding the R equal to zero case that reduced to the floor. That's it. This heavily relies on the fact that the shape of any CCHM style composition can be represented by some dimension expression R. In general, we could not do this. By the way, this has been implemented in the proof assistant cubicle actor. In sum, 
We have a few tricks to implement Plan C. There is a remaining question: Is it worth it? We do not have a clear answer. Even though we can reduce notable compositions to non-notable ones in many cases, the reduction blows up the size of the terms as well. It's unclear whether the benefit we got is worth the price we paid. There are also tons of theoretical questions. For example, none of these tricks work for unknown co-vibrations. In QWERTY, we can work with an unknown abstract co-vibration. It's quite powerful, but at the same time, we do not know how to avoid notable compositions. The lack of the ability to handle unknown co-vibrations is just a symptom of the lack of a general theory. For experts in categorical models, you can take this as a challenge. To what degree can we build a univariate universe using only non-nullable co-vibrations? By that, I meant the co-vibrations that are true under double negation. Still very open. What we can do in general. Thanks for your attention. Here are a few items you can read if you want to learn more. Please join the discussion on Wednesday. Bye.